Welcome to our course on using eye washes and emergency showers. The first 10 to 15 seconds after exposure to a hazardous substance are critical. Delaying treatment even for a few seconds may cause serious injury. Eye washes and emergency showers provide on the spot decontamination. They flush contaminants from your eyes, face, body, or clothes. They are a form of first aid equipment that you can use in the event of an incident. When used correctly, they help people avoid serious injury such as blindness and chemical burns. Please note that they are not a substitute for safety precautions and good work practices. Wearing personal protective equipment, or PPE, such as face shields, safety glasses or goggles, and an apron can help protect your skin and eyes against exposure to chemicals should an accidental release occur. Unfortunately, no matter how many precautions you take, there is always some risk of exposure. That's why it's important that you know how to use eye washes and emergency showers properly and help fix problems when you see them. By the end of this course, you will be able to identify why it's important to have quick and easy access to eye washes and emergency showers, recall how to safely use eye washes and emergency showers, recognize eye wash and emergency shower neglect, and identify how to correct common eye wash and emergency shower problems. Before we continue, you should note that this course does not cover eye wash and shower design, installation, or specialized plumbing-related maintenance and servicing activities. Always check the Safety Data Sheet, or SDS, for any material you are handling or to which you may be exposed before using it to make sure you understand the specific first aid recommendations for that material. For example, some powders may be more dangerous or damaging when wet so using an emergency shower may not be the best first action for exposure. Instead, you might need to remove the powder first and then use the emergency shower. The only way to be sure is to check the SDS before an incident occurs. Finally, remember to refer to manufacturer instructions for details about the specific eye washes or emergency showers at your location. Eye wash and emergency shower stations are critical emergency safety equipment intended to mitigate eye and skin injuries when control methods do not prevent exposure to a physical or chemical irritant or a biological agent. An eye wash is needed where workers handle substances that are corrosive or otherwise harmful to eyes in a way that may result in harmful eye exposure. An emergency shower is needed if workers handle large quantities of corrosive or other harmful substances that have rapid effects on a regular basis and in a way that may result in substantial contamination of the worker's skin. Your employer must make eye washes and emergency showers available when there is potential for exposure to corrosives, potentially infectious materials, strong irritants, and other harmful chemicals. They can be separate units or a combined unit. Often, injury occurs immediately or within a short time after exposure. The longer chemicals stay on the skin or eyes, the deeper they can penetrate and the more harm they can cause. Some substances, such as fast-acting poisons, can be rapidly absorbed and have toxic effects, such as permanent scarring and other long-term effects, just seconds after exposure. Immediate flushing typically reduces damage. And because every second counts, shower and eye wash units must be readily accessible and must effectively and promptly remove the harmful substance. Eye wash and emergency shower stations are critical emergency safety equipment intended to do what?
Let's talk about some general best practices for eyewashes and emergency showers. First, you should receive training on where to go and what to do if you or someone around you needs to use an eyewash or emergency shower. You don't want to be figuring out what to do in the middle of a crisis, so become familiar with the equipment. Training, such as this course, helps to ensure you know how to respond when seconds count. You also need to be prepared to help others. People exposed to chemicals may be temporarily blinded, in pain, or panic-stricken. Assist people who may not be able to think or see clearly during an emergency. Following the correct flushing time is also important. In general, you need to flush for 15 minutes. However, some chemicals may require more or less time. Refer to the manufacturer's SDS for specific guidance on first aid procedures for the chemicals you may be exposed to in your workplace. Be aware that some clothing may absorb chemicals. You may need to remove clothing and personal protective equipment for proper flushing. Privacy curtains are available for many shower units. Since every second counts, it is best to begin showering and then remove your clothes so that you start flushing without delay. When your eyes have been exposed to a harmful chemical, your natural tendency will be to close your eyes. This interferes with efficient flushing. Use your thumb and index finger to hold your eyelids open. Some manufacturers recommend rolling your eyeballs around so the water will flow on all surfaces of the eyes. Additionally, some manufacturers recommend that you remove contact lenses as soon as possible to ensure that chemicals are not trapped behind them. Make sure your hands are clean before touching your eyes. If a contact is fused to your eye, seek medical assistance before attempting to remove it. Some companies prohibit contact lenses, so be sure to check your company's policy before you wear them to work. Consider this situation. Marie works as a chemical process operator at a chemical manufacturing plant. Near the end of her shift, a highly corrosive chemical splashes in her eyes. What would be her best course of action? As we mentioned earlier, wetting dry chemical powders may make them even more hazardous. If this is the case, you may need to brush dry chemicals off, being careful not to breathe them or further expose yourself. Do this before using an eye wash or emergency shower. As always, remember to refer to manufacturer instructions for your specific eye washes and emergency showers and read the SDS for each material you are handling or to which you may be exposed. The final best practice is one of the most important. Eye washing and showering help to limit damages, but you must seek qualified medical attention after eye wash or emergency shower use. Failure to do so could result in permanent damage or complications from the exposure. For your protection, some manufacturers include an audible or centrally monitored flow detection system to signal emergency responders when you turn on an eye wash or emergency shower. If that is the case, use the eye wash or emergency shower as directed while waiting for help to arrive. Note that alarms are particularly important when work happens in remote or isolated areas. You need to confirm these features work if equipped. If you've been exposed to a hazardous dry chemical powder, 
What might you need to do before using an eye wash or emergency shower? As you already know, you will use eye washes and emergency showers only when you've been exposed to chemicals. These situations are rare. Because you won't use eye washes or emergency showers very frequently, they have the potential to become neglected, and neglected equipment may not work properly when you need it during an emergency. When inspecting eye washes and emergency showers, look for signs of neglect. They include obstructions in the area, nozzles that are clogged, broken, or missing, inoperable activating valves, water pressure that is too high or too low, foreign particles in bowls or basins, or missing nozzle dust covers. Also, self-contained eye washes may have low fluid levels, and cleansing solutions may have visible debris or discoloration. Regardless of the type you're inspecting, it's important that you report issues and ensure that unsafe conditions are promptly corrected. Can you recognize eye wash and emergency shower neglect? Identify the three signs of neglect at this eye wash station. When inspecting, can you recognize eye wash and emergency shower neglect? Identify the three signs of neglect at this eye wash station. Be sure to keep eye washes and emergency showers visible and unobstructed and make sure you can get to them quickly in an emergency. Eye washes and emergency showers should be within 10 seconds or 16.8 meters, 55 feet of the hazard. They should be on the same level as hazards and accessible through a relatively direct and easily traveled path that is free from stairs, ramps, doors, or other obstructions when corrosives and other hazards are a concern. Post signs prominently and make sure they are easily visible. Some companies apply floor markings as a reminder to keep eye wash and emergency shower areas free from storage and clutter. Do not obstruct eye washes and safety showers. Fixtures should not be blocked by cords, hoses, debris and other tripping hazards, boxes, pallets, and other materials. Remove obstructions as soon as you discover them. Water flowing through dirty nozzles may transfer contamination to your eyes, face, or skin. If you are using an eye wash or emergency shower, you probably have chemical burns or other injuries. These injuries make you even more susceptible to infections. So, it's especially important that you keep nozzles clean. You can do so by making sure nozzle caps and dust covers are in place to protect nozzles from dirt and debris. You also need to ensure that the water in an eye wash or emergency shower is clean and without visible contamination, such as dirt or rust, for the same reasons that nozzles must be clean. Water found in improperly maintained eye wash stations is more likely to contain dangerous microorganisms that thrive in stagnant or untreated water, 
and are known to cause infections. You want to avoid contamination and infection. Periodic inspections of the water in eye washes and emergency showers typically involve a few things. You should flow water through plumbed, fixed units. Look at the flowing water to ensure that the units are functioning properly and that water is clean. You'll also want to check the flushing fluid. Flushing fluid should be clear and visibly free from foreign particles. Odd colors or contaminants are an indication of poor fluid quality in the supply line or in the water source. For plumbed eye washes or emergency showers, you should keep flushing until the water flushes clear. For portable eye washes or emergency showers, check the expiration date on the flushing fluid. As long as it is not expired, you can assume it is clean. Let's take a moment to review. Choose the words that best complete the statements. Eye wash water pressure should not be too strong or too weak. The eye wash flow rate should be strong enough to displace any caps if they are present. A general guideline is that eye wash water streams should meet in the middle but not overshoot the bowl. It is recommended that emergency showers provide at least 75 liters or 20 gallons of water per minute for 15 minutes. Bathroom showers typically do not meet this recommendation. Self-contained units have sealed water supplies, so you won't be flow testing these weekly, but you should still observe these for adequate fluid levels, leaks, and other obvious issues. Eye wash water pressure should not be too strong or too weak. The eye wash flow rate should be strong enough to displace any caps if they are present. A general guideline is that eye wash water streams should meet in the middle but not overshoot the bowl. It is recommended that emergency showers provide at least 75 liters or 20 gallons of water per minute for 15 minutes. Bathroom showers typically do not meet this recommendation. Self-contained units have sealed water supplies, so you won't be flow testing these weekly, but you should still observe these for adequate fluid levels, leaks, and other obvious issues. Because they don't always meet flow rate and time recommendations, personal eye wash equipment or eye wash bottles may not be a suitable replacement for eye washes or emergency showers. Although personal eye wash bottles are highly portable, you should only use them as an interim measure when corrosives are involved. For example, they are useful when transporting someone to a more substantial eye wash station or medical facility. Exposed workers can then continue to flush for the 15 minute period. Replace portable units when the expiration date is reached. You'll need to drain and refill units with refillable reservoirs periodically, for example, every six months. You may need special preservative additives when refilling these units. If the water coming out of an emergency shower or eye wash is too hot or too cold, it may make an already uncomfortable situation even more uncomfortable. Discomfort could discourage people from using the eye wash or emergency shower for the full recommended flushing time. Water that is too hot can scald a person. Generally, temperatures higher than 37.8 degrees Celsius or 100 degrees Fahrenheit may cause chemical interactions with the skin and result in further damage. At 15.6 degrees Celsius, 
or 60 degrees Fahrenheit, hypothermia becomes a concern. Lukewarm or tepid water should be used whenever possible. Remember to check the safety data sheet for specific first aid recommendations for each material you handle or to which you might be exposed. Choose the words that best complete the statements. You may notice that your eye wash or emergency shower has a tag attached to it. Your company may use tags to document the most recent inspection date. You should refer to your company policy to determine how frequently you should inspect eye washes and emergency showers. Typically, you will test plumbed fixed units weekly. In-depth inspections for code compliance are needed less frequently, for example, annually. Always check tags and decals to make sure inspections are being performed as frequently as your company requires. Before we continue, let's see if you can identify how to correct common eye wash and emergency shower problems. Read each scenario and then select the solution that would have solved or prevented the problem. A violent reaction occurred when Jason added concentrated sodium hydroxide to a laboratory beaker containing a strong acid. Jason immediately realized he forgot to wear the face shield required for his job. Before we continue, let's see if you can identify how to correct common eye wash. You may notice. Before we continue, let's see if you can identify how to correct common eye wash and emergency shower problems. Read each scenario and then select the solution that would have solved or prevented the problem. A violent reaction occurred when Jason added concentrated sodium hydroxide to a laboratory beaker containing a strong acid. Jason immediately realized he forgot to wear the face shield required for his job.
Joe went to use the eyewash. Half blinded by sulfuric acid, he tripped over some boxes. Mia felt a lot better after just five minutes of flushing at an eyewash. Since the water was really cold, she stopped and went back to work. The next day, Mia's doctor told her that she had chemical burns on her eyes and might need surgery. In addition to the information that you received in this course, you need to know how to prevent or protect yourself from chemical spills, splashes, and other unintended releases. Remember that eyewashes and emergency showers are not a substitute for safe work practices and wearing personal protective equipment. You need to learn about the chemicals in your work area. You can refer to your employer's hazard communication or chemical hygiene programs for more information. Remember to read applicable safety data sheets. You should know about the types and locations of eyewashes and emergency showers in your work area, and also how to summon emergency assistance to the places where you work. Dialing your local emergency number is not always the best option if emergency response teams and first aid services are available on site. During this course, you learned how to safely and effectively use eyewashes and emergency showers. You should now be able to identify why it's important to have quick and easy access to eyewashes and emergency showers. Recall how to safely use eyewashes and emergency showers, recognize eyewash and emergency shower neglect, and identify how to correct common eyewash and emergency shower problems. Now that you know how important they are to your health and safety, take the time to locate the eyewash and emergency shower stations in your facility or job site.